you very much. Uh, so thank you, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, and thank you very much for the invitation to make this presentation to you today. Um, I'd just like to point out that these uh, uh, are my views, not necessarily the views of uh, the Ross Company. So um, setting out the case for changing the way we think about uh, paying for healthcare. Um, I think we know that uh, healthcare costs are growing across the world on average at more than twice the rate of gross domestic product, which uh, over time would seem sustainable. Uh, I think the second major data point is that if you look at the correlation between life expectancy versus health expenditure in OECD countries, this is from 2015, but we don't think it's changed much in the meantime. There is no strong correlation between health expenditure and health outcomes, which means that we must be, systems must be wasting money. They are not uh, achieving the best that they can with the money that they're spending. And then lastly, if you look at the variation of outcomes in many different um, uh, in many different care settings, such as uh, mortality from uh, uh, the mortality rate um, from or from bypass surgery or complications uh, um, f uh, and reoperations after hip surgery, you can see there are um, major differences. Um, but um, twofold is is uh, comparatively small different. But for bypass surgery, there are fourfold differences between the best and the worst. And uh, after colon cancer, there are 20 fold differences. So this means that we are not learning effectively from each other and learning effectively from best practice. So uh, that's another reason why, um, I mean, that's one of the reasons why there's a poor correlation between life expectancy and health expenditure. But that's another reason to look at how we pay for healthcare differently. Um, as uh, um, the, um, the host said a few minutes ago, um, the original ideas um, came from Michael Porter and uh, re related to value-based healthcare came from Michael Porter and Elizabeth Tysberg uh, in 2006, so uh, over 15 or 15 years ago. And um, I think one of the things about this is this underlines um, the complexity of making this shift from um, volume-based healthcare to value-based healthcare. But one of the key things that uh, Porter and Heisberg said in this book is that um, good quality essentially costs less because if you um, have good quality and you learn from each other, you can have more accurate diagnosis, fewer treatment complications, lower complication rates, faster uh, recovery, less invasive treatment, and the minimization of the need for treatment. So essentially, better health is less expensive than illness. And they set out a framework um, for um, shifting from the, uh, the then um, organization of healthcare to one which would um, use these uh, six principles to, um, to move towards value-based healthcare. And you can, um, you can see that the, all of these six principles um, interact with one another and are all enabled by a, an information technology platform. So essentially, the collection of data um, about health outcomes, because this is the fundamental piece um, that is required to learn. And this is also at the basis of learning healthcare systems. So... We see that uh, value-based healthcare is made possible by three key components. Um, measuring outcomes in a consistent way, real-world data, and value-based financial incentives optimized for patient outcomes. And one of the things laid out in uh, Porter and Teisberg's book was that uh, they see value as uh, being the outcomes that matter to patients or matter most to patients divided by um, the cost across the full care cycle. So you have to look at um, the whole of the patient journey. 
um, and uh, as I say, map all of the costs um, from start to end of the patient journey, because if you focus only on one part of the patient journey, you're, you're not optimizing the, uh, the cost across the full care cycle. And um, this, if you're able to do this, this then gives you um, a, a clear view of, uh, of the value that you're creating. Um, one of the, the other principles is that when healthcare systems optimize, they shouldn't optimize for, um, for instance, for, um, uh, for, econ for um, the economic um, uh, incentives or for, uh, or for the, um, uh, you know, along medical disciplines or geographically, they, could, they should organize to uh, or optimize around the outcomes that are most important to patients. So as I said, there's three, three major um, building blocks to achieve this. The first is measuring outcomes that matter to patients in a consistent way. The second is um, better real world data, the collection, analysis, and sharing of outcomes and cost data. And this requires that the outcomes data that you collect are made transparent to system actors so that they can optimize it around improving um, uh, those outcomes and then providing value-based financial incentives, um, which are then geared to optimizing patient outcomes. So central to the success of value-based healthcare is the ability to measure outcomes that matter most to patients in a consistent way. And this requires then that you have for, um, for the diseases that you are um, focusing on, that you have an outcome set, um, a basically a, a standard set of outcomes that you track um, in, in any particular disease. And ICHOM, the uh, International Consortium for the Harmonization of Outcome Measures, has um, over the last uh, um, five, six, seven years, have created outcome sets for, uh, I think they have about 50 outcome sets now, um, which uh, cover the, um, the majority, um, I think uh, around 50 to 60% of, um, of global diseases. And the, some of the key elements that they see here are um, that you need to not only measure clinical outcomes, but you also need to measure patient reported health status, because this um, represents or this complements the, uh, the clinical measures you have uh, and gives you a true view of what is most important to the patient. Um, and you have to do this in a way um, that is consistent and reproducible. Um, and you need to capture patient outcomes data that are objective, reproducible, and implementable in clinical practice. And one of the things that has slowed down a little bit the, um, the adoption of value-based healthcare approaches is that this, is, um, this takes time to set up these systems to be able to measure patient outcomes uh, or patient reported outcome measures and integrate them with clinical reported outcome measures to derive outcome sets um, in a, a, an objective, reproducible and implementable way. So um, to give you a few examples of how this works, um, if you look at uh, um, a disease like um, prostate cancer and uh, the Martini Clinic is, um, is uh, I think, an excellent example of, first of all, focusing on a specific disease. So that's um, creating a, an integrated practice unit, um, uh, which is solely focused on, um, on improving uh, the way that um, uh, prostate cancer is treated. Uh, and if you look at the differences between um, the average German performance, that's on the, the dark blue, and the Martini Clinic, and you compare five-year survival, there's not a, a big difference between the Marti, Martini Clinic and the average German clinic. However, when you look more deeply into the outcomes that matter most to patients, which are um, incontinence after surgery or severe erectile dysfunction after surgery, 
you see that there are enormous differences between the performance um, that the Martini Clinic is able to, to achieve and, uh, uh, and the average German uh, clinic. So 43% uh, uh, of patients um, suffering incontinence after one year versus 6% is a, a, a vast difference in, and uh, this is clearly a, uh, an outcome which is extremely important to patients. And you can look at this in, in a number of other diseases. So um, the Santion Clinic uh, or Santion Hospital Network in the Netherlands have also been uh, um, an organization which is really focused on um, implementing value-based healthcare approaches. And again, you look at the, uh, the average between Santion and the best performers, and you see significant um, differences in reoperation after positive margins, reoperation due to complications, and um, lumpectomy day cases, the ability to, um, to do this, uh, this surgery and release the patient after one day. So we believe that uh, value-based healthcare will drive better results for everybody, and the systematic measuring of, uh, of outcomes data the analysis of uh, the sources of variation and why you are not achieving best practice, and then moving towards best practice and changing behaviors to enable this through um, serial improvement cycles is, um, is a way to, uh, to, uh, um, to effectively implement um, value-based healthcare approaches. So uh, these are the local contacts in Roche, Slovakia. Um, Pavel Lepe and, uh, and Peter Markatan, and thank you very much for your attention. Thomas, thank you very much from our side. Veľmi pekne ďakujem za také hĺbšie ponorenie sa do problematiky value-based healthcare.